Hi everyone and welcome back to the Retro Channel. Now today we're just going to be looking at a couple of Commodore 1541 disk drives. Uh, both of these have issues, uh, they actually came from Mr. Lurch so he's still got the top cover and uh, by the looks of it most of the case screws but that's okay. Um, apparently this one I believe is not reading disks properly, it works for a little while and then pretty much stops. And I think the other one, he said it can't find home. Uh, I'm not 100% sure what that means, but I guess we'll find out in a minute. But um, for now, let's start with this one, because uh, it's already got a disc in it. So I'll put this aside and we'll just, I guess, connect it up and see what it's actually doing or not doing. All right, so the Commodore is up and running. Let's power the disk drive on. And the motor spun up, so that's a good start. Let's, um, let's just try and load the directory. Oops. Try that again. All right, well, that looks okay. Because um, I'm running Jiffy DOS, I'll just Use the keyboard wedge shortcut to see if this will actually load. Okay, it uh, it seems to have stopped and drive light is currently not on. So it doesn't look like we've got any action going. Let's just restart the Commodore. And we'll try and load that again. So the drive light's currently on, it's just turned off. And, oh yeah, here we go, this looks better. So it's odd that it didn't start up the first time. So I think, I think what he meant was there's an intermittent fault and um, it seems to work whenever it feels like. Now these ones, they don't have any Jiffy DOS or anything installed on them. Even though the C64 has got Jiffy DOS, um, you also need it in the disk drive in order to for Jiffy DOS to um, speed things up. Um, but I think I think Mr. Lurch does plan to, on putting a Jiffy DOS chip in one of these drives. Um, actually, one of them was mine um, that I gave to him. I wasn't sure if it was working or not, and clearly it wasn't. So um, it's kind of only fair that I actually take a look at these and see if I can at least fix one of them for him. Um, but it looks like we're still loading okay at the moment. And yeah, well, Strider's loaded up, so that does seem to be working. I'm just gonna try and load it a couple more times um, just to see if it'll shit itself again. Right, so I tried it out a couple more times and it does seem to be working, but obviously we had that issue the very first time we tried it out and as Jason said, he's had some issues with it. That's interesting. The actual drive motor is spinning as I put the disc in, which I don't think is normal behavior. It seems to be when it, when it blocks out the right protector sensor, it spins the motor. I'm not sure if that's just a quirk um, with this particular revision. This is the, I think, what's usually referred to as the super short board. Um, and maybe that's just what it does with this setup. I don't know for sure, but I mean, the rest of the logic seems to be working okay. So I don't think we've got an issue with the, um, the CPU or anything or the VIs. So anyway, Let's fire up some diagnostic programs and we'll just have a look and see if the drive is aligned properly and all that kind of jazz. Normally the one I'm going to use is provided as a bin file, um, which you then burn onto an EP-ROM and put in the cartridge port so, you, so you're not using the same disk drive to, to try and boot up the diagnostic software, you're booting off the cartridge and then running it on the disk drive. Um, but I do not currently have a cartridge to burn that to, so I'm going to attempt to use this Pi Zero, um, which is 
a Pi Zero with a Pi Zero 1541 hat, um, which also came from Mr. Lurch. He um, had some issues getting it going. And eventually I did figure out what was going on. I think he had it set up with the wrong software initially, but um, it does work now. So we're gonna try and boot the diagnostics off this in order to run them on the floppy drive. Uh, probably should just power this off. And the Pi will need power itself. So when we power this on, the screen should come up. Yep. And I've got this set to device nine, which is configurable in the, um, the configuration options that are stored on the SD card. Uh, and hopefully I've got this right. Yep. Okay. Um, and I don't really have anything on the Pi 1541 at the moment because I haven't really had a good play with it, but I do have the 1541 diagnostics, so we'll fire them up and hopefully it will be able to address the disk drive and not try and address the 1541. And yeah, the, I got this off, um, I think it's CSDV because it's, it's a disk image and not the original card image, so obviously someone's had a play with it and converted it to a disk image. Um, but it looks like it has worked. So we'll try the alignment check. Now the alignment check should be used with a, um, a, a, a pre-made disc. So not something that you've um, written to using the same drive because it's whatever you write to is gonna be the same alignment as the drive. So you want a, um, a prefab disc. So, um, Strider's already in there, so we'll use that and run the alignment check. And yeah, we pretty much should be getting a hundred in the third column for every track. Um, and the fourth column has the, um, the between tracks, um, which are not really accurate using the, this alignment software. I think, um, it's recommended to use the actual oscilloscope and, and check the alignment that way, but I'm just doing this as a quick test. So it looks like we're a, a tiny bit out of alignment, um, but yeah, as I said, the between tracks are sort of, they don't really give us that much indication. For this, we want a blank disc because um, we could end up overriding this disc, which um, I'm sure Jason wouldn't be happy about. So here's a brand new blank disc. Let's go for the speed check and see. Now the ideal speed should be 300 RPM and we are definitely reading below that. Um, with this particular model, the, um, the speed adjustment is right here, which is convenient. Sometimes it's, I think it's, can be underneath the drive. Um, but here it's right on top, which is good. So we'll try and get that as close to 300 as possible. It is, it, it could be because, you know, over time things have, have built up in the drive motor and, and the spindle. So it's going a bit slower due to that crap being stuck in there. But um, I don't know exactly how to lubricate these drives at the moment. And it looks like possibly Jason has already made a start on that. I can see some fairly new grease there, but I know it's recommended to use silicon grease in some parts, lithium grease in other parts. And um, I think I even read, I can't remember what type of oil it is, but they use it for um, camera lenses. Um, but obviously I, I don't have that. And I don't, I don't want to stuff around because if you over lubricate, it's worse than having no lubricant at all. So I'm not going to mess around with that. We're just simply going to adjust the speed. But I guess if you do um, adjust the speed now and then end up lubricating everything, it's best to check the speed again to make sure it hasn't changed from, um, you know, loosening things up, I guess you'd say. So let's try and get this. Ooh, spot on 300, we're close. It's very sensitive. It's 
probably about as close as we're gonna, gonna get. Um, so yeah, that could have been causing random issues if it wasn't reading properly due to it being running too slow. So let's get out of that. Let's do the performance test and yeah, make sure you've got a blank disk because I'm pretty sure this will format the disk, which is what it's doing right now. Okay, so everything passed, that's, that's good news. All right, so the other thing I wanna do is just clean the head, because I don't know if that's been done, but just a bit of IPA on a cotton bud and you don't wanna lift up the head um, or the top of the, um, I guess it's like a clamp. You don't wanna lift that up too much because it is attached to a spring, so you don't wanna stretch that spring out. And you probably can't see what I'm doing here, but um, yeah, unfortunately I don't have a macro lens or anything, so I can't really get too close up on the camera, but that looks like it was pretty clean to begin with. So it may have already been done by Mr. Lurch. Right, so I ran a few more tests with Strider and it, it worked fine every time. So we did have a, um, a drive speed issue, but Hopefully that's all that was required for this drive. So um, let's take a look at the other one. I guess we'll power it on. All right, so the head spun and stopped. And yeah, it doesn't spin when I insert a disc. So I think it is a quirk possibly with that other board that it just spins the head, or spins the motor. Ah. I do not have a lever. Thanks for that. Um, all right, we're going to cheat and just do it ourselves. All right, let's give it a try. Yeah, now this one apparently doesn't find home. And I can see straight away that we're getting file not found. Now, one of the other good things about having Jiffy DOS in the C64 is it's easy to look up the, the drive error codes um, with a simple keyboard wedge input. Normally with normal Commodore Basic, you have to, you have to type open 15 comma 8 comma 15 and that'll open up a, like a communication channel directly to the drive and then you can query the um, the error codes and that kind of thing and reinitialize the drive, um, which is probably what I'm gonna do now. So um, we'll send an initialize command, which should cause the head to um, to go all the way out, bump against the, um, the head stop and come back. Uh, whoops. So at I, we'll send the initialize command. And yeah, the head moved back bumped and then came back to track 18 and now the drive light is flashing so we can read the error channel. The other good thing about this is, yeah, you just need to hit the at symbol to read the error channel. So Jiffy DOS makes it a lot easier to do this kind of stuff. We're showing 21 read error on track 18, sector zero. So that's not good. It could be a, um, a dirty head or possibly even a faulty drive head. Let's just try and load the directory. And yeah, once again, Jiffy Dots makes this easy. And it's just doing a little That's it. So I think that's what he meant by I can't find home. Clean up the drive head, see if that helps us out. It's a bit trickier with this board because it is longer. Um, it's a bit harder to get to that drive head, but I can still get in there. I did see something on, I think it was Gadget UK's, one of his videos. Um, he actually used a bit of uh, Maguire's um, Scratch X, which I do have um, to clean up the head. It's sort of, you know, it's, it's a mild abrasive, so I guess it sort of polishes out any scratches or any, anything that's really stuck to the head. But these visually look clean. Um, yeah, unfortunately I don't have a macro lens, so I can't really show you 
a close-up shot of the drive head, but that's clean. Let's fire it up again. Let's see if that helped. We'll just try that directly. Yeah, okay, so we can't even load the directory. Drive not ready. Um, the logic seems to be working, so I don't think there's any issues with the actual main board itself. Um, so next thing I want to test is to see the resistance of the drive head itself. So this connects to the drive head and um, there's pretty much four pins. What we are going to do is probe these. And I've just got my little crappy multimeter at the moment, but that'll do. So I think the red on the end is one of the drive heads and the blue is the other drive head. Basically the drive head split into two, um, but they should both apparently read And my probes are not small enough to get in there. 12.4 on the blue one and 15k on the red one. Um, which yeah, doesn't seem right. So I'm pretty sure if you can see there's a little pin that's sort of, I think it's actually covered in a bit of heat shrink, but that's that's the sort of the power going to the heads and yeah I'm pretty sure between that pin and the blue and that pin and the red they should both read it must be around 12 to 15 ohms but this one is reading 15 kilo ohms so it looks like the coils inside the drive head have actually opened and I think what we're reading the resistance of the erase head or something so I think we're actually just reading that and the reed head, well, at least half the reed head has gone open circuit. So that's probably why we're not picking anything up. So looking around online, I did find possibly a solution for this, which is to get a low value resistor around 12 or 15 ohms. I think this is 15 ohms and pretty much jumper it across the dodgy reed head pin and that that main power pin and that should it won't actually fix it um, but it should allow us to at least get a little bit further with this so let's try that out I've got 15 ohm resistor across our suspect part of the drive head Let's see if we can get a directory. Yes, we've got a directory listing. Don't think we'll be able to load the game. I'll be surprised if it does, but this is really just a, like a, yeah, it's already bouncing. Um, yeah, this is not the ideal solution. You can't really fix the read head without replacing the read head. So that's a bit D. Um, so yeah, it looks like this will definitely need a new read head. Um, and at the moment I don't have a spare one, so I can't stick anything in, but at least I know that's what needs to be done here. All right, let's see what happens when we try an alignment check with a half working read head that's been bodged. Okay, yeah, you can see it's got definite issues. Um, the second column, should match the first column because that's the track number that it thinks it's reading and some of them have come up as 255 so it's not even reading the track at all really and um it's pretty much saying everything's out of alignment because the actual head doesn't work properly so it's not super surprising i guess yeah okay that's just a mess let's do a speed test just for curiosity's sake, whether or not that'll be accurate, I'm not sure, but we'll do it anyway. <laughs> it 
Drive speed is error, so I can't even run the speed test in this state. Yeah, no. Can't even run the speed test. Alignment's reporting just random crap. Um, so a new drive head, which um, hopefully I'll be able to cover in a new video. I mean, we do have one of them that seems to be fully working. So, um, so Jason can have that one. And if he's got no need for a pretty much dead drive, um, I'm more than happy to attempt to um, find a replacement head and fix it. I did read up online that the Neutronics drives are prone to this type of drive head failure. Um, some people suspect that possibly the drive head's not sealed properly, moisture gets in there and yeah, corrodes part of the, um, the coils on the drive head and then you have open circuit. So yeah, that's about it that I can show you in this video. Um, yeah, I don't have the rest of the case or anything. And yeah, like I said, I'm not going to be lubricating anything in this video. It was just, um, just have a look at a couple of 1541s with slightly different um, errors. We didn't have to touch anything uh, in terms of logic or ROMs or CPU or anything by the looks of it. Um, yeah, it was really just a, to see what we could find out. Um, and hopefully this will help you out if you're having similar issues with the 1541. Um, I will leave links below to the software that I've used uh, and some of the websites that I um, sourced my information from. And um, oh yeah, and if I remember, I'll leave the um, the regular um, Commodore Basic commands to initialize the drive and, and check the errors if you don't have Jiffy DOS installed in your C64, which um, you know, I, I guess a lot of people probably don't. Um, so if I remember, I'll leave that in the description as well. But um, until then, thanks for watching the Retro channel. And um, yeah, be sure to like, subscribe, all those kind of things. And I'll see you again soon. I am definitely working on a Commodore 128 video, but it is a little bit more involved. I'm still working on that at the moment. So you will um, stay tuned. That'll be ready soon, I hope. Now I'm just babbling on about shit, so um, bye.